Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with none other than Mr. Jacob Davis, owner, operator of the nutrition store here in Bowling Springs. The purpose of this video is we're going to give you a little bit of information, a little bit of background on Mr. Davis. Uh, but he's all the time doing videos about products here in the store, uh, things that can help you out. This video is just solely about him and uh, just kind of give you a background, some things you may not know about him. Do you have any idea what I'm about to ask you? I have no clue. So Ronnie uh, came to me earlier this week. He's like, hey, man, um, a lot of people have questions about you. And, you know, you do all these videos. You have a different personality than what is actually behind the curtain. So I told him, man, we'll do it. Don't tell me the questions. That's we'll right. Wait. So <laughs> That's right. All, all of his answers are just completely off the cuff. Yep. Right. So let's get started. Uh, Let's see what we got here. <laughs> so, where where were you born and raised, Dad? Yeah, so um, I was born and raised here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, mm -hmm. Mary Black Hospital. Actually, okay. um, grew up here, went to Bowling Springs, all the uh, district two yeah. through high school. Graduated in two thousand fourteen. Cool. Did you play any sports? Um, <laughs> so I played football. Yeah. Uh, ninth and tenth grade, and then I found. Bodybuilding, believe it or not, my dad got me into the gym, and it just took off from there. Yeah, so, so you started started working out in the gym, tenth, eleventh grade. Uh, yeah, so I started working out around ninth grade, uh, a little before that, and it was more I was kind of a chubby kid, mm -hmm. and I wanted to lose weight. I was tired of kind of being I wasn't picked on really. I wasn't that big, but at the same time, it was that kind of conscious. Uh, I feel like I was fat. Uh, and then I really got passionate about it in ninth and 10th grade when I started seeing muscle gains and mm -hmm. just fell in love with it. I got you. Is that when you first uh, became in interested in the supplement industry or fitness industry? Or yeah, so, um, you know, at first I was all about supplements, reading my Flex magazine, reading the propaganda, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then as time went on, I just became more passionate about the science behind everything. Um, really got into exercise physiology and, and nutritional science, um, and that became my focus. So in high school, that became your focus. Mm -hmm. You graduated high school, obviously. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, where'd you go to from there? So that's a good question. Um, after high school, I basically I applied to a few colleges mm -hmm. and went through university was my first choice. Shout out um, to the Eagles. That's right. That's right. Um, and I started out going to Winthrop for nutritional science. Um, you know, going into school for nutritional science, I thought I was going to be able to capitalize on research and actually helping athletes and, and more people with a health mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realized real quick that it's more for people who are already sick. Uh, the dietitians in the hospital working with people who are dying. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I switched over to exercise science. And exercise that, science. Yep. Yeah, it's was, like the science of exercising, right? It's crazy, right? It's like <laughs> two of the easiest words possible you throw together, you have a profession. So. I got you. So, you, so you graduated with a degree in exercise science. That's correct. That is correct. So fair to say you probably have a pretty good idea about uh, what's going on in the fitness industry. <laughs> you know, it, I will say this. Um, exercise science is not a degree to be proud of. It's a four-year degree that, to be honest with you, most people that go into it are athletes in high school uh -huh. who don't really like to think much. They just want a degree that can get them through. Uh -huh. And uh, I chose it for a different reason. So I think if you devote your passion to the degree, you're going to get the most out of it. Do you think that some people who work at other supplement stores would have a degree like that? Most of them, no. But then again... Um, People who have the exercise science degree, mm -hmm. uh, there is no education whatsoever on supplements, and there's minimal education on nutrition in that degree. Um, so everything that I know on nutrition is either taught to me from mentors or uh, self-taught. Okay. So the degree, I often try to separate it because mm -hmm. it does no, it has nothing to do with nutrition. <laughs> it's just a piece of paper? It is. It is just a beautiful piece of paper on that wall that tells people, I uh, stuck through something for four years. There you go. So, so are you a personal trainer? Yeah. So, um, at age 18, I got my certified personal training license or cert certificate. Um, and I've been, I worked for five years in and out of gyms, uh, working with over 200 people total. Okay. Um, 
Now, you know, the type of training we did in the gyms is obviously not anything special, but that did kind of spin me into more intensive nutrition coaching. Do you have different type of uh, clients when you were a personal trainer? You had different clients with different goals? Oh, for sure. You know, like uh, we have people as young as 14-year-old uh, athletes, um, really fun to work with, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to 80-year-old people who are rehabbing uh, okay. from physical therapy, um, have trouble walking. So broad diversity there with awesome. different people. Let me ask you this, just kind of getting into a little bit, not necessarily about uh, the nutrition store or anything like that, but uh, who would you say was your childhood hero? I'd probably say my dad, and that's just because uh, now that I'm older, I, more spe especially uh, being the oldest kid in the family of four, uh, seeing a dad who worked mm -hmm. a lot at the time, I didn't understand uh, why he was doing that and providing for us, but... Uh, seeing him start a business from nothing out of the garage and uh, and grow it and become, you know, make something of his life. He he is my childhood hero. I got so, you. Well, uh, let me ask you this. You have to choose one, okay? Okay. You you can't you can't <laughs> say neither or pass. All right, let's get it. If you had to be labeled as a bodybuilder mm -hmm. or somebody who terms himself as a CrossFit type exercise. Mm -hmm. Which would you rather claim? Bodybuilder, 100%. Oh, you didn't even think about it. No, I, I don't need to. Um, <laughs> so I'm not against CrossFit. Mm -hmm. I see it as an extremely beneficial um, combination of different physical traits. And I totally don't disagree with anybody who does CrossFit in that they're probably much more fit than me. Uh, I do train for hypertrophy, specifically volume training in the gym. Mm -hmm. I do want bigger muscles. That's just kind of uh, what I'm into. But I don't knock any other form of fitness. I understand. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean I'm not in shape. There you go. You know. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What happened? This was this was a few months ago. You did a couple of videos about it. What happened to the strength stash? <laughs> um, girlfriends happened and wives yeah. happened. No, um, so the strength stash was a movement initiative to basically bring together Spartanburg's fitness culture and um, it had too much of a masculine presence to it, obviously, because women can't participate. They couldn't handle it. No, well, they can't handle it either. You know, there's too much sex appeal in one face. <laughs> uh, so me and the boys, about the boys and I, who had the strength stash, um, we waited until the end of October to do our Mario and Luigi skit with it, and we shaved them off. And now, um, three months later, four months later, we have initiated the Hub City Coalition, which is gender neutral. So, <laughs> everybody can participate. Everybody can participate there, and we are working actively to build a community here in Spartanburg County. Needless to say, Spartanburg's got a lot of good things going on. Oh man, Spartanburg's growing so quickly, and uh, you know I'm just super excited to see uh, what's to come and how it unfolds with everybody here. So, what would you say is your favorite cheat meal? Oh, so um, if you guys know me and know my nutritional tendencies, um, it I don't believe in clean versus unclean food. Um, there is no such thing when it comes down to the energy balance, all that. But if I had to choose, my favorite cheat meal would be steak nachos from Nacho Taco. Shout out my boy Fabian with a La Paz beer. Mm -hmm. um, that's the beer that they do with Thomas Creek. Literally, when I wake up in the middle of the night craving something, I just wish that Nacho Taco was open. So Steak nachos. Steak nachos, baby. Mm. It doesn't sound that bad. Oh, dude, it's, it's brilliant. It's literally nachos. Mm -hmm. Steak, okay, and queso, okay. Like, what three ingredients could you like? That, that's everything. We'll so. Try it out sometime. Well, we, we definitely will. You want to go tonight? I have to work. Ah, okay. Well, so I'm going either way. So, well, it's Friday. You can uh, <laughs> you can treat yourself. Well, uh, Jacob, that's all the questions I have. I hope that this was informative. Uh, oh man, you, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for. Uh, initiating this because I wouldn't right. have done it on my own. Well, I know you wouldn't because all you do is promote the nutrition store and that's very well and good and, and you should do that. Right, uh, right. But, you know, sometimes people may want to know a little bit more about the man running it.